Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to tell you all about what makes a Rolex so special. But before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. If you were to ask what the finest brand of wristwatch in the world was, the answer will usually be Rolex. A status symbol, Rolex is one of the most popular luxury brands in the world that has been worn by everyone from Winston Churchill to James Bond. The brand is one of the best known and most coveted in the world. The most expensive Rolex sold at an auction achieved a price of over $17 million. But why are they so expensive? Is it just clever branding? Or is the value of these watches due to the rich and historic journey of the brand? In today's video, we'll look at the history of the company and find out why Rolex is so expensive. So first of all, how much does a Rolex cost? The prices for a mechanical Rolex watch start at about $3,500 for the Oyster Ladies watch. The James Bond Submariner will cost you up to $6,000 and a Colt Daytona costs around $8,450. In 1955, the GMT Master was born. This model with a rotating dial cost $6,000. Rolex began when Hans Wilsdorf set up a watch distribution company in London. Wrist watches were still inaccurate, but Wilsdorf had the dream of building a watch that was not only precise, but also elegant. He used small movements, which were made by a watch company in Vienna, Switzerland. He used the name Rolex because it was short and suited the timepiece and was easy to pronounce in any language. The company focused on the quality of its movements and its pursuit of chronometric precision. The Rolex wristwatch was the first of its kind to receive the Swiss Precision Certificate by the official Watch Evaluation Centre in 1914. In 1919, Rolex moved its headquarters to Geneva, and in 1926, Rolex launched the Oyster. This was the first waterproof wristwatch with a sealed case to protect the inner watch movement. In the following year, an English swimmer named Mercedes Glides wore the Oyster watch while swimming through the channel. The watch survived the 10-hour journey and remained in good working order. This is an example of the excellent early branding and marketing strategies of the company, in 1933, a team of explorers flew over Everest, all wearing Rolex watches. In September of 1935, Sir Malcolm Campbell set a speed record of over 300 miles per hour. And what was he wearing on his wrist? That's right, a Rolex. Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Everest wearing a Rolex. At that time, Rolex was already established as the wristwatch for high achievers. Winners, record breakers and adventurers all wore them. In 2000, the 4130 chronograph movement was developed and assembled. It was an admirably simple chronograph, consisting of only 290 components, which is far less than a standard chronograph movement. Rolex continues to lead the wristwatch market. Watches that leave the factory are tested to high standards and are also tested by the independent Swiss Chronometer Testing Laboratory. Each watch deserves to be called a superlative chronometer. Every Rolex is accurate to minus two to plus two seconds per day. It exceeds the strict standards of minus four to plus six seconds per day. The internal movements of the watch are a complex development and require time and money to perfect them to the desired level. Movements are expensive to manufacture the parts are small and have a high error rate due to the manufacturing process. These parts have to be assembled by hand, and the Swiss have one of the highest labour costs in the world. The materials are also expensive. To make a Rolex, they use 904L steel instead of the standard luxury market of 316L steel, and this increases the manufacturing costs. Rolex has had to replace most of its production machines and tools, the switch to 904L steel and the quality of workmanship is usually higher than, say, Omega or Taghauer. So, 
Rolex is not in a position to price watches at the level of other brands. Rolex makes between 800,000 and 1 million watches a year and does everything itself, including melting the gold and the steel. You could say that Rolex watches are inexpensive because their selling price is close to their resale value. If you were to buy a new Rolex watch and wear it for a year and then sell it to a new buyer, you wouldn't lose much money on that transaction. Some popular models after a period of 10 to 20 years can actually increase in value from their selling price. This increase in value is rare in watches, but it is consistent with the intelligent marketing of Rolex and brand value despite their high price. It is difficult to find another product in the world with the same level of quality. Rolex has built a reputation based on the durability and quality of the workmanship that goes into their watches. It is also expensive to be developed. The movements have to be developed for each new watch or timepiece. Rolex spends a great deal of time developing products. Rolex watches are much more than a practical timepiece also. With their fusion of engineering and watchmaking and their rich heritage, it all adds to the value of the brand. A Rolex Daytona in stainless steel, which once belonged to the actor Paul Newman, is considered to be the most expensive watch ever to be sold at auction. The Phillips Auction House in New York sold the timepiece for $17.8 million, beating the previous record of $5 million for the Bow Cube Rolex. So, when we have a look at the cost of the Rolex, we have to take into account the development and material costs of the watches into account. Their brand value has been built up over the years through the performance of Rolex customers. So, do you think that a Rolex wristwatch is worth the price on the box? Is there a better watch out there on the market? And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to share your thoughts and valuable feedback with us in the comments below. You can also suggest topics that we should cover in our upcoming videos. And last but not least, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the bell button to be notified every time I upload an interesting video to the channel. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.